these are these skates are actually recreational skates that have uh, a walk on the concrete. So they're basically in terrible shape. On the SSM2, there's an option which you can add for profiling, and it adds an extra hardware that's on here. And when the disc gets smaller in diameter here, it sort of gets in the way if you're not doing profiling. So when you get down to the end of the disc, when you've got a skate coming along here, you want to have it not touch the vacuum piece. You're getting kind of close here to this bolt. So this was used in profiling uh, with another holder to align your skate that's on the rig. There's this whole big piece that goes on here with profiling. And that's on the SM6 version here that's got this cross arm and a totally different holder and then there's this piece that flops over goes back and forth and then it has the rods go onto this. I'll show that in a second but if you take this piece off with the 10 millimeter bolts then you can go through um, 10 millimeter hex you can go through and have a little bit more room toward the end of the disc not to foul the skate onto this okay I've removed this piece from here I did an outline to show where it is now when I'm doing this figure skate here recreational skate I've got much more I'm not going to go ahead and hit over here when the disc is a lot smaller that's just a recreational skate the piece I removed is right here it's used when you align the skate to the fixture when you're doing profiling you come over here to make sure you've got it centered where you want it to be now this whole thing here flips over and this rod here runs through here like this this goes back and forth this rides on here and there's a roller here that you swing around I'll just pick it up put it on this roller here is what touches the template template goes on so the side here this is four meters thirteen feet it clamps down inside this piece like that and that runs against the roller over here and then you can go ahead and hook this up to over here you index it over on here so this flips over goes on the rod I've got it on here you have to clamp this down this screw here pushes on this and that determines the distance from here going inboard it's really kind of a slick device so you can go in moves it back and forth so when you're profiling on here you can adjust this to go cut more off and they had I think on the brochure I had from 2006 they had a uh, I think they had one that had two two radiuses of curvature on here they had radiuses of 7 through 12 then they had one that radiuses with glide on it then they had a combined templates here Detroit 1 was a 3 and 6 meter radius a 4 and an 8 was a Detroit 2 they had one called dual 1, 2, and 3 normally what you do on here is you use a stone that's real coarse so that you want to do this is not the coarse stone but you want to take off a lot of material and not heat the blade up and uh, ruin the blade so you want in profiling you want one that's going to go through and be an aggressive stone well, this kind of looks like a rig job but it actually works pretty well I haven't used it that many times 
and this was actually used by somebody who did goalie skates in Los Angeles and it follows on here it's got a really beefy clamp here that clamps down on the skate you can see somebody shimmed it here make sure that's level I don't have this tightened down I've just got that template held in there so after you've done a few passes you can turn this and do a little bit more you can put a pencil on there to kind of see or a bluing to see what you're cutting at that's the SM6 which is this extra stuff that's added on here which is uh, this 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 piece and has this giant holder here modified H8 holder and these directing screws here this piece I took off is when you go back here and you use align this up onto here by aligning up and this goes back and forth its motions defined by all this which is rigid against here this rod and so what this does is that when you put the skate and the clamp here you're going through and referencing how you clamp it down so if you want to change the pitch and have the blade this way or this way that's what this is about you're coming and just kissing this with the blade I believe when you come back over when you're clamping it and that's why this is out of the way it's only used as a reference surface that's why it's called number four that's called uh, directing screws and the center mark which is on here this dot the center of the blade of the skate blade because you don't want to have the skate to where the blade is uh, this way the skate this way or this way because you're going to profile it wrong that's how do you change the pitch so this is a device that's on here and I've taken it off just because I was sharpening enough some other pair of skates I decided to do a video just to show how some of this stuff works I'm getting down toward the diameters getting down here on this normally you take this and flop it over and you take this thing and you pull it out first I'm going to cake this out and I'm going to pull this beast out of here there's the swing arm. You want to go in here and vacuum some of this stuff because when you're moving this back and forth to cut one, you want this doll to be free swinging. So I take the vacuum cleaner and kind of make sure you vacuum around the pivots. There's a recreational skate that goes in here. This is a different holder. So you've got swing motion this way, and then the blade floats on top of here. You want this to be fairly close, not to, to catch a lot of the crap with a vacuum cleaner, but you don't want it to be so close you're going to foul. So when you're over here like this, uh, you got to get this pivot stuff out of the way. So I'm going to put it over like this now I've got this with a smaller diameter stone I've got uh, no fouling on the alignment piece that's over here I was using it last year and I didn't have a problem I just got kind of close so it's kind of unnerving so what you want to do is you want to get a, a good even flow but when you're cutting here through here like this if I kick this on, try to do this one hand, it may not work. Probably won't have a very good flow. That was horrible. So 
but that doesn't really have that well of a flow. So what you want to do is you want to use two hands to get an even cut on it. Okay, so what you want to do before you even turn it on, you want to make sure you got a good flow, like through here. You want one even speed. Let's see if we can actually do that. bit of bounce there. A little bit of vibration. These are just recreational skates. Okay, before I do this, you want to make sure you kind of make sure you got a good flow. Everything rolls good. I'm not going to run the vacuum purposely. These, are, these skates are actually recreational skates that have uh, been walked on the concrete. So they're basically in terrible shape. If I go over here and look at the um, squareness here, we've got them square. You adjust this wheel up and down to get the uh, where this touches on here on the blade because this floats on here. And like any other holder, you want to make sure you've got this actually not touching anything so it's not bowled over there's a little bit on here so when this is in the holder like this you want to make sure you've got uh, this is gripping so it doesn't foul anything So it's easiest to go through and do a whole bunch of skates that are the same size. Then you get used to, you know, not touching the boots. Every now and then you'll get a boot that's uh, any skate holder. you got to be careful you don't foul something on there. So this has got to be enough that uh, it doesn't touch this. And what I need to do is go through and adjust this and get this wheel even closer right now so you do this adjustment under here you can get this to be closer so as the wheel moves you got to get this little support wheel to be closer to that 